Hello. 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 How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I hope that you are too. Hello. Hello. Hello and how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I hope that you are too. Well, I'm starting here surrounded by a bunch of mammals, and I know you didn't expect to see a bunch of mammals, but uh, we do have, let's see, we have one mammal dog here, one mammal person with a nice alligator shirt, and another mammal person with a nice iguana shirt. And so today, um, we're going to be doing some fun things. And let me give you a little hint of what is coming up, because it may involve alligators, it may involve a pond, and you may notice I'm wearing something today. These goggles, I'm not wearing them just because Dr. Fauci recommended goggles for, for coronavirus. So, so we may uh, have something to do with these goggles and this swimming suit and an alligator pond because we're going to be taking into you, you to an area called our lizard lounge this morning, our outdoor lizard lounge. So we have a couple different lizards we're gonna start feeding. And then uh, if things go well, if we don't get eaten by any lizards, I'm going to end up in the alligator pond. Does that sound like fun? Give me a thumbs up if that sounds like fun. All right, so here we go, guys. I'm gonna take you uh, through, the, through the gate here. Kenny's gonna open the gate. And we are going to head over into the lizard lounge. So let me see if I can flip it around. And uh, some of this I'm gonna be filming, some of it I'm gonna hand off to Kenny, my cameraman. So let me flip it around. I'll show you what we have set up for you guys. All right, so we have some food here. Can you read what it says there? That's gator food. And then we have, this is some herbivore food, some lettuce and some grapes. Uh, down there we have some frozen mysicles. We call them our Scooby snacks. And I'll show you why we need to be careful right off the bat. Can you guys see who we have here? That guy right away uh, is our big carnivorous lizard. That's Ernie the Tegu. So we need to give him some Scooby snacks to get him out of the way so we can safely get in there. So we're gonna start by unlatching the gate, right? We're gonna try to move this open without hitting Ernie too much. See how that gate is gonna swing right over Ernie. And then these things here, this is a set of tongs. So we're gonna start over here with the frozen mysicles, the Scooby snacks, and see if we can get Ernie to eat one of those. Hey, Ern, come here, buddy. Hey, are you hungry this morning? Here you go. So we can get him to fill up. Then, oh, now we have his attention, look at that. There you go, buddy. And so now we have Ernie started. So if we can get him to fill up, then we won't have to worry about him eating us. He is actually our biggest carnivorous lizard that we have right now. That means he's a meat eater. So we're gonna leave some of his Scooby snacks over there for him. That should, boy, he is going to town on those. All right, so now I'm gonna get my other helpers. Viola, you take the lettuce and the grapes. You take the lettuce and the grapes down there, bring them in. That way we can sidestep past Ernie, okay, and walk towards the other end, towards the iguanas. Kenny, you go ahead and come in here as well. So here's what we're going to do now to make sure we don't lose Ernie. We're gonna close this gate and hopefully none of our neighbors are watching this because if they knew about it, they might think it's funny to come over here and latch the gate from the outside and then we would be locked in with the alligators. <laughs> We're going to leave this here. Kenny, you take these tongs just in case we need them. So let me show you what we, oh, file has already started on the, uh, on the iguanas. So let's show you what's going on over here. This is what we have to do every morning, give these herbivores some food. Herbivores means plant eater. Herbivores, just a fancy word for vegetarian. Vegetarian is what uh, the Indians used to call bad hunters. They called them vegetarians. And so you can see, I don't know, I read that on Wikipedia, that may not be true. So we're <laughs> see if we could just hang this up here. There we go. So you can see Jade, our iguana, she's used to eating leafy greens normally, but as a treat, she gets some of that. So Viola, why don't, or Kenny, why don't you come over here, Kenny? Kenny is going to hold the camera for me. Um, come on down, Ken. Where should I put the tongs? Well, wherever you want. Okay. And I so, know they're new tongs? No, those are not our new tongs. Viola's talking about we just ordered a big equipment order of hooks and tongs and gloves and tubes. Lots of cool venomous snake handling equipment. All right, Kenny, take this and just get a close-up of Jade. And I'll show you guys, every day we like to give them fresh leafy greens, see if she will eat her leafy greens. 
I hope you campers at home have been eating your leafy greens. It's very healthy for you to eat leafy greens. And if you're an iguana, that's what you eat usually is leafy greens. And then you can see there's always one of these things at the end. That's like the, the butt end of the lettuce. And we throw those to the tortoises. They love eating even the very end of the lettuces. So, Ken, I'm going to switch over to the alligators a second. Well, please stop splashing the alligators. <laughs> They're already wet enough. So you can see down here, guys, this is our alligator pond. And who do we have down here? They love to camouflage in these plants. I want to show you guys how alligators swim. If we can get a good look, they don't swim with their arms. They don't swim with their legs. They swim with their tails. We get a good look. Watch how, oh, there they go. You'll see they won't use their arms. Sorry, it gets hard to track them in here, uh, but they see if we can get under there. I know the reflection is making it hard to see, um, but they will swim around. We have three different alligators in there. Oh, there's one. Watch them go, and they wiggle that tail back and forth. That's how they swim. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me ask you a question here, flip it around. Uh, do you think it would be fun if I went swimming with the alligators? Would that be kind of a fun way? All right, I see you guys are like, oh, this is the last, the last visit Jesse's doing one way or the other. So it's either gonna be by schedule or by alligator, but it has been fun. And uh, so that's what we're gonna try. And my goodness, I can see, I'll show you something real quick. <laughs> flip it back around this way if I can. Look at that, Ernie is down there and he is just finishing up his breakfast. That is one happy lizard when he gets a bowl full of mycicles for breakfast. I hope you guys are not eating too many mycicles for breakfast. I don't think that would be, uh, that's probably not on most of our menus, is it? All right, guys, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hand off this camera to Kenny, and Kenny is going to film me going for a swim with the alligators. So this should be a lot of fun. Now, just, just so you know, alligators, they do not usually eat us if you are in, uh, say, Say you're in Africa or you're in Australia, that's where some of the largest crocodiles in the world live. And, uh, and they typically will eat people more commonly. American alligators don't usually eat humans. Now we have about 3 million of them. Boy, the shade is playing all kinds of tricks on us today. We have about 3 million alligators uh, that live in the United States and they don't usually eat us. It's been a long time since there's been a fatal attack by alligators on people. In fact, the last year that that has occurred historically in the United States was way back in the year. 2020 so it hasn't happened now for several weeks so i am going to take a swim here with the alligators and i'm going to show, share with you one of my favorite crocodile books in a sec all right here we are guys it's been nice knowing you all right kenny go ahead and take that can you see this i wonder if we can all right you're gonna have to that'll be your viewfinder in there all right viola uh you need to move over for me please all right kenny back up so you can see me completely on screen here. All right, so Kenny has a good view of me up here on the rock, and I'm not actually gonna jump in from the rock. This is the basking rock that sometimes our monitor lizards and tegu lizards and iguanas like to climb up here and sit in the sun to relax. I'm not gonna jump in from it, but I will use it to step in. All right, here we go. Now, I don't even know how cold this water is going to be. We filled this up yesterday. We refilled it yesterday. So it's had one day to warm up in the sun, uh, which means it could be warm or it still could be freezing cold. I'm about to find out. Viola says it's not cold. She checked. Oh, that's kind of cold. All right, let's see. Here we go. Ah, ah, All right, it is a little cold when you first get in. That is for sure. All right, I'm going to just sort of slink down here in the tub. I'm going to try to keep my hands dry actually for a little while because I have a book I want to read to you. Kenny, you can actually come a little bit closer. Oh boy, it's very cold. Oh great, now the alligators are swimming up closer to me. I'm gonna try not to sit on them. I can feel one on my toes. Where is he? How did he get down there? Um, all right, I'm gonna try not to sit on one when I go all the way down. Ready? This could be very interesting. Wait, I should probably put my goggles on just in case. All right, there you go. Now I'm protected from alligators and from coronavirus. Here we go. Oh, super cold. Ah, ah, oh. It's so cold when your belly goes in. Ah, oh. Oh. I like that. It's actually much better. Very refreshed. Now, while I'm in here, <laughs> the alligators are actually not swimming up to me. 
fact, that's usually what happens in the wild. If you get in the water, alligators usually want to go away from people, not with people. You can see Viola wants to sit here on the rock and put her feet in. You may sit on the rock, Viola, and put your feet in. Um, but while Viola's doing that, let me show you these plants that we have. Kenny, could you get a close-up of these floating plants? These plants float on the surface. These are called water hyacinths. They're found all throughout the southern United States and the Central America. And I want to show you the root systems. See those giant root systems? That's actually one of the reasons we have these pond plants in all of our ponds. The, uh, with the, all these plants here actually do an important job. Oh, I just felt an alligator swim across my toes. Um, the, the pond plants, uh, they have these root systems that are natural filters. And so those root systems are actually going to eat some of the, some of the waste from the animals. So they are a natural filter that they live, they thrive on. Um, but anyway, so these filters, they actually help clean the water for us. These pond plants clean the water and then the alligators love to swim in them. So Kenny, I see some alligators. Um, I will grab one in a second. Why don't I read you a little bit of my favorite crocodile story, Lyle the Crocodile. Viola, go grab that for us, would you please? Uh, it's over there in the corner of the lizard lounge. So I will read you a little bit from Lyle the Crocodile while I'm here swimming with the alligators. And then um, in a couple minutes, you guys just give me a signal um, Elaine, about how much time do we have, by the way? We have as much time as you want, Jesse. <laughs> oh, great. So we're doing really well. Okay, so Kenny, can you get a good view of the book we're about to read? So this is a, a series of stories called Lyle, Lyle the Crocodile, and it's by Bernard Weber. So Lyle the Crocodile, oh, I, oh I'm feeling an alligator tail right on my toes again. They're just climbing all over me. Um, so Lyle the Crocodile by Bernard Weber. That's a storybook you could find on Amazon if you guys want to order some yourselves, or there are many of them at our local libraries. So you can order them at your local library. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Look at how thick that is. That's actually a collection of several stories by Lyle the Crocodile, but I did bookmark a page to introduce you a little bit to the series. Viola, why don't you take that bookmark for me? So I'll read a little bit about it, and then it's hard to read with goggles on <laughs> to introduce you to the series. So Joshua, who had heard everything, raced to the front door to be greeted there by an oddly dressed man who handed him a note. This will explain everything about the crocodile, said the man, leaving quietly but swiftly. See, the story of Lyle the crocodile is about a family that moves into a house and finds for some reason there is a crocodile living in their house. So here's the note they get. It says, um, please be kind to my crocodile. He is the most gentle of creatures and would do no harm to a flea. He must have tender, loving care, for he is an artist and can perform many good tricks. Perhaps he will perform some for you. I shall return cordially, Hector P. Valentini, star of stage and screen. P.S. He will only eat Turkish caviar. P.P.S. His name is Lyle. Turkish caviar indeed, exclaimed Mrs. Prim. Oh, to think this could happen on East 88th Street. Whatever will we do with him? Suddenly, before anyone could think of a worthy answer, there was Lyle. Do you guys see Lyle coming down the stairs? Oh, I feel an alligator climbing on my foot again. What? It's the biggest one in here, too. You know, this story really comes to life a lot more when you're swimming with alligators while you read it. So maybe if you guys have alligators at your house, um, you know, check with a professional herpetologist before you do this um, under supervision of a zookeeper, but maybe try swimming with alligators while you read it. It could be fun. Now, actually, I don't recommend swimming with alligators for the average person, only if you're Jesse Rothacker. And just as suddenly, Lyle got a hold of a ball that had been lying among Joshua's belongings and began to balance it on his nose and rolled it down the notches of his spine. Now he was walking on his front feet and taking flying leaps. How many of you guys wish you had an alligator who could do that or a crocodile who could do that? What a great crocodile. Now he was twirling Joshua's hula hoop, doing it expertly. So the prims just had to clap their hands and laugh. Lyle bowed appreciatively. He had won his way into their hearts and into their new home. And you can see everyone is there giving a nice crocodile hug to Lyle the crocodile. And so the story goes on for quite a while, and I won't read the whole thing, but you can see he likes to uh, get the newspaper, likes to bring in the milk. That kind of tells you how old of a story this is, that he was 
bringing in milk uh, from the front porch. He folds towels, he feeds the birds, and when he sets the table, there's always a surprise. I got an ant on my arm. I don't know what the ants are doing here in the alligator pond. It is only to show him once uh, to how to make a bed. Look at Lyle knows how to make a bed. Are you getting that, Kenny? Yeah. It looks like he's eating a giant piece of pizza, but no, that's actually him making a bed. Uh, <laughs> and he likes to play in the park. He likes to go in parades. Uh, Lyle's a good sport and he always wants to play volleyball. He has learned to eat something besides Turkish caviar as well. It looks like he's eating Italian ices. Can you imagine, would that be kind of fun um, to have a crocodile who loves to eat Rita's Italian ice? That could be interesting. <laughs> so anyway guys, this story goes on for quite a while uh, and it shows, look, here's Lyle in a parade and Lyle gets into many many adventures. Viola, why don't you take the storybook of Lyle the Crocodile. All right, and Kenny, you can put it back on me. Whew. What did you guys think? Is that kind of a neat storybook of Lyle the Crocodile? Um, Kenny, why don't you show them the crocodile that's on Viola's shirt. Viola, could you move your hair out of the way so they could see the nice pink crocodile? And so for today's episode, Viola wore her favorite pink alligator shirt. Now, I've never seen pink alligators in the wild. In fact, you notice in the book, Lyle the crocodile is green. And in most cartoons, you will find alligators and crocodiles are green. But let me see by thumbs up or thumbs down, give me a thumbs up if you think alligators in the wild are really green. Give me a thumbs down if you think alligators in the wild are not green. Well, we happen to be in an alligator pond. So right now I'm going to find a real alligator and we're going to show you their real colors. Then you will know once and for all if they're really green. So Kenny, why don't you back up a little bit so you can get a full shot of the pond and you can get a, a shot of me trying to catch an alligator. All right, we have three alligators over here. Do you guys see them? Now, as I move the pond plants, hopefully you can see through the reflection, but yeah. there they go. I'm gonna look for one. I'm gonna try to get our biggest one. Oh, good, I have them. I can stand in the pond. <laughs> yes, you can, Viola. Now, um, Kenny, I'm going to have you look at this guy wiggling around here. Let me see. Viola, you want to stay away from the mouth end, please. In case anyone's wondering about Viola, we do teach her to stay away from the mouth of alligators. All right, Kenny, go ahead and get a closer look at his pattern. So this is the real color of an alligator. They're kind of black and white or black and yellow. As they get older and bigger, that pattern fades away. You might be able to tell this one is already losing his hatchling stripes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release this one back in the pond and I'm gonna to try to catch a smaller one so you can see more of their hatchling colors. All right, here we go, ready? All right, away he goes, he's back in. Oh, I could feel him, he just went across my toes. These guys really like my toes. They keep crawling across them. Uh, oh, I feel them down on my toes again. They crawl on my toes a lot although they don't usually bite them, thankfully. Uh, none of them have tried biting my toes yet. All right, here's the one I want. You see it over here, Kenny? I got it. Oh, he's really splashy. Now this one, you have a better look of the actual colors. Oh, I just felt another one on my feet. Um, so check out these actual colors. You see some black and white or black and yellow, and these are the natural colors of an alligator. So when you read a book like Lyle the Crocodile, you'll see the crocodile as a cartoon is green. In fact, mo most cartoon alligators and crocodiles, you can expect them to be green in a cartoon. But now you guys know in real life, they are not really green. Kenny, are you able to get close enough to see the ripple sensors? Wow, he is wiggling his tail everywhere. Let me grab that tail so Kenny can get close enough. See if you can get the ripple sensors. Do you see them yet? No, I are you, you know the black dots around his mouth, those ripple sensors? Yeah. Are you able to get them? A little. All right, see if Kenny, I'm trying to see if Kenny could get those ripple sensors. Uh, yeah, Dad, they're too small. They're too small, they're not showing up on screen? No. Okay, well, if you guys could see them around the face, you see those tiny little black dots. I don't know if the camera's able to capture them. We have lots of shadows here playing tricks on us. But those are ripple sensors and alligators have over a thousand of those. They're all around the mouth, they're on the tongue, and those ripple sensors help them be able to tell if there's movement in the pond. So right now they can feel me sitting in here just with their ripple sensors. Kenny, get a good shot of the snout and the nostrils. 
Can you guys see where those nostrils are on the end of the snout? Now, I want to show you guys this. All right, can he follow his head as I put him into the water? Alligators have nostrils on the very tip of their snout, and it makes it so they can submerge their entire body. Look, his nostrils are still above the water. Oh, I feel an alligator crawling on my foot again. Hopefully he's not, oh good, he's not eating me, he's just crawling on me. But you see those nostrils, he can still completely breathe right now, even though he's completely submerged. So alligators and crocodiles are excellent at camouflaging in the water. All right, I'm gonna release this guy. There you go, buddy, you can swim away. Wow, there he goes. All right, so for our last thing that we're gonna try, I'm curious to see if this will work or not, and I'm guessing it won't work, but we're gonna give it a try. We are gonna try feeding the alligators while I'm in here. Usually I do not have them eat while I'm in the pond, but I'm gonna give them a chance to see if they wanna eat while I'm in here. It'll be a very curious experiment. So Viola, I'm gonna send you to go get our alligator food, please. Good idea, because there was an alligator right by my feet. <laughs> there was one right by your feet. Oh, and also I can, it turned around. Uh, Viola, you can still open the door. Oh, you mean the tegu's turned around? Yeah. Okay, so can he show how the tegu is? and show that is our problem. So Viola, grab our tongs for us, and we're going to uh, move the tegu out of the way so Viola can get to the alligator food. So Viola, grab those tongs for me, please. So we're going to move the big tegu lizard, and we're gonna work our way outside to get to the alligator food. All right, buddy, I need you to move away, Ernie. Come on, pal, go on. I know, I know, keep going, pal. I know, keep going. You can back up a little, Ken. We just want to move him over to this corner. Good deal. All right, we got him over there. All right, so now he's out of our way. He's not blocking the door. Now, Viola, you may go out the door and get our alligator food. And I would like to show you how alligators eat, but we don't know for sure if they're going to eat while I'm in here. So you guys, while Viola's getting the food, you guys have any questions for me about alligator fun facts? Any alligator questions? Wait, okay, don't throw it in yet, Viola. All right, so I'm gonna move the plants over here. Hopefully that will make the alligators pop up over there. All right. And Viola, go ahead and drop that in, see if they're hungry to eat. Kenny, I want you to film over there where the alligators are. See if they come up to eat. So what we're throwing them right now, guys, it looks a lot like dog kibble. It looks, <laughs> I have an alligator coming over this direction, right over here. I'm gonna see if I can get our alligators just, oh, good, he's swimming that way. See if they're gonna eat. Keep your eye on him, Ken, I think he might eat. Sometimes they don't like to eat. Up oh, there he goes. Good job, Kenny, are you getting him eating? Yeah. So what they're eating, guys, it looks like dog food that you might give your cat or dog at home, but that's not dog food. It's called Missouri Crocodilian Diet. And Missouri is a brand that makes lots of exotic um, foods that are nutritionally mixed for zoos and places like us, so we can give the healthiest food to our alligators or our crocodiles or our caimans. And so we have at least one of them who's deciding to eat for you today, which I'm very happy to see. Well guys, why don't you raise your hand if you have any questions, and, um, and I will let Elaine or someone unmute you if you have some questions to ask. And I'll try to answer a few alligator questions from right here within the alligator pond. And um, if you don't have any questions, then we'll just say so long until next time. Can you guys think of some alligator or crocodile questions for me? Jesse, I have a question for you. I was wondering yes, how, uh, how big do the alligators get and how long do you keep them? Oh, terrific question. So these alligators, they may get 10 or 12 or 14 or 15 feet long, a thousand pounds. And in case you guys are wondering just how crazy I am, if we had an alligator that was say three or four or five feet long or bigger, I would not be in the water with them. At this size, a bite from these alligators uh, would just take a little band-aid. So even if they decided to chomp me, it would not be a dangerous bite at this size. Certainly if they were five feet or 10 feet or 12 feet, it would be a very serious situation. I would not be in the water with a giant one like that. Um, we typically get them about one or two or three feet long. And then, Viola, um, 
why don't you hop out and throw some more food in please so we typically get them around that size and then we usually find homes for them around three feet okay, or so okay. if they're bigger than three feet it gets hard to comfortably house them in pennsylvania and so we work with rescues that are in georgia and in florida where alligators are native and then they can set them up outdoors 12 months a year um that that way they have plenty of space plenty of natural sunlight good question do you guys have any more alligator or crocodile questions for me jesse i got a question um in the chat somebody wants to know how often they have to eat or how often do you feed them mm, good question so a lot of that is going to depend on what they are eating well let's just keep your legs okay um if they are eating something very big they may fill up and they may not eat for another week or maybe not for a couple weeks um, we tend to feed them about every couple days because what we're feeding them just to show you guys see these little pellets looks like dog food so it's just big enough uh that they can chomp down they can get a good mouthful but they don't actually need to eat every day um, and so we will see kind of how hungry they are. It depends on the weather also. If, say, you were talking about alligators down in Georgia, where occasionally it gets so cold that the water freezes. Remember, we showed you how their nostrils rest right above the water, um, kind of like this, can pretend that my fingers are an alligator nose. They can put their noses through the ice, even when the water freezes. Their nose would be like this through the ice so they can breathe and they would actually hibernate in the water while there's ice on the surface with just their nose above the surface. Um, and the reason I bring up all that information is to say if it's that cold, they are not eating at all. They may not eat for months over the winter if it's too cold to digest their food, um, but they can still survive in fairly cold temperatures. Well, thank you guys so much for inviting us uh, to your camp again this very special summer of 2020. Um, I think this could still be a very special year for all of us because one thing we've learned, even though there are some things that we don't get to do in 2020, there are some very special things that we get to do this year that we don't normally do any other year. Like in a normal year, I don't think I would have had chances to um, measure a python with you or show you how we feed our turtles in the turtle garden or actually go swimming with alligators, which really is a lot of fun for me. So thank you so much, guys, for giving reptiles a chance. And thanks for inviting our reptiles, of course, to Aaron's Acres. It's been a lot of fun being with you guys this year. Now it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye to our friends.